Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isretel here for Renaissance Periodization. In the last several days, I have been lost in the Alaskan wilderness, which explains why I haven't had an opportunity to shave. I did fight a couple of bears though. The judges scored the matches even. I thought I had the advantage. My corner definitely thought I did well, but you know that your corner always thinks you're doing well. In any case, this lecture, video, whatever you want to call it, is not about bear fighting, although we should make one of those soon. It's about so a related topic, actually, coming back from severe injury, which I am told when mortal people fight bears, they are likely to experience. I, of course, got away with no wounds at all, as you can tell. So coming back from severe injury, what does that really mean? So first thing we're going to do today is we're going to define what we mean by severe injury, because, you know, if you nick your fingernail a little bit, that can feel severe, but may not qualify. Then we have kind of a four slash five phase process it's not all at once. There are multiple phases and each time you get through a phase, the way you know you're through a phase is you've qualified for the minimum sort of checklist of the next phase. Like, am I ready to do this next phase? Well, can you do this checklist? So we'll go through that, make sure that everyone who's coming back from severe injury and training is going slow enough. And this isn't like, oh, go slow or you hurt yourself, kind of like pedantic bullshit parents tell you. It's legit, like if you go faster than this, you probably just get hurt again. People do this all the time. Number one priority coming back from severe injuries to get jacked again, clearly. Number two is to not get hurt again, because if you do that, you're not getting jacked again either. So you can even say not getting hurt again is probably number one priority. And then after, we're gonna talk about how to transition to really make normal, normal training. And we'll also see that once you've been severely injured, normal training is a little caveated. It might not be 1,000% uh, normal, uh, but close. Let's get into it. So what does severe injury really mean? There's a lot of def different definitions we could use. The one we'll use today is when you can't use the muscle and or joint you hurt in everyday life without severe pain or notable like, damn, this is fucked up kind of pain. That's very different from a minor injury, which a lot of times like you, you hurt your quad squatting and someone's like, does it hurt walking around? And you're like, no, I'm not like my knee's not broken in half and only even if you could do a bodyweight squat, it might just feel a little weird. And then only when you go heavy, does it actually hurt? Like that's not a severe injury. When the comeback from that injury is actually much more straightforward, much faster, so on and so forth. But with a severe injury, it hurts kind of all the time in regular daily tasks. Like you hurt your shoulder and you're moving to get a, a cup of water and you're like, ah, ah, like that's pretty serious. That's pretty legit. And essentially means that you definitely can't lift hard. Hard lifting is for sure out. Like, if your quad is hurting while you're walking, if somebody asks you, like, you still going to lift today? You're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? No, right? Like, if it hurts walking, it's going to be, like, impossible to do any lifting with. And most commonly, severe injuries are uh, torn or severely strained muscles. They can be joint stuff as well. Um, and they may or may not require surgery. So severe injury doesn't have to require surgery, but sometimes it's really, really bad. And the doctor says, look, we don't have to go in and operate. There's really nothing to reattach. You're going to heal by yourself, but this is super, super legit. And you can't just train through it and you can't just have an easy comeback, right? So no easy comeback. We have phases, four, maybe five phases, depending on how we categorize it. I'll see what uh, I mean in just a bit when we get to it. Phase one isn't a phase that you design yourself. It is a phase that is foisted upon you by the medical profession. It is physical therapy. That when you get your physical therapy prescription, that is the first thing you're gonna do and you are going to do it diligently. You have to, because if you rush the process and skip physical therapy or cut it off soon, you're very likely to get hurt again. They don't give you PT just randomly for no reason. Physical therapy reestablishes the basic movement patterns, starts to heal the basic structures onto which the rest of your recovery is layered. If you skip physical therapy and you cut it off soon or something like that, or you just kind of like, what is it called? Um, you know, mail in the results sort of, you're not going to have a very good time. Your chance of getting hurt is much higher. And here's the thing, PT sucks. It's boring as shit. It's damn near borderline offensive with the bands and tiny little five pound dumbbells you have to use. Nobody likes doing PT. Nobody likes doing physical therapy. I don't think. That's okay because you're the kind of person listening to this video, you do what it takes, not what you like. If you did what you like, you would just go back in the gym and lift heavy again. Duh, but that's not an option. Do your PT, do whatever the PT has you do, do it well and finish the course they assign first before you do anything else, right? And 
once the PT or doc clears you for PT being over, they may say, look, you can't just go back and do normal stuff. You still have to ease in to your training for that muscle or for that joint. Don't worry, we got what easing in means is the rest of this lecture, the rest of this video. But they may also, and you should ask them if they don't, clear you for the rest of your muscles. Because a lot of times, if you have a severe injury, like a, like a torn quad, even training your biceps hard creates a lot of uh, blood, blood pressure spikes and intra-abdominal pressure that actually fucks up your quad a little bit. So sometimes, especially post-surgery, when there's sutures and stuff attached, kind of on a, a, a bit of a, like a, a, sort of like a really thin filament, you can actually hurt an injury site that's unrelated just by training something else hard. So... Your doctor will tell you no training hard at all for the next four weeks if you get surgery or if you don't get surgery. He's like, look, two weeks, no hard training at all. Just start doing your physical therapy. And then at some point, the doc will clear you for training the other muscles or joints that aren't involved hard. When they do, train them hard. You will make excellent gains. There's two sort of ends of a spectrum of how your results can go months after you hurt your, let's say you hurt your quad. One end is you kind of just get depressed, slough off, do your PT, slowly start coming back. And then once you're fully healed, you six months later start training hard again for your quad and the rest of your body, which means you lost a shitload of muscle and function in the rest of your body. And then it's like a big comeback trail. It's not the hardest thing in the world because comebacks, you know, usually the muscle and strength come back pretty fast, but you have to sort of do it all at once. It's kind of like a lost six months. On the other end of the spectrum is you do all the due diligence of taking it time and easy with your quad, but as soon as the doctor clears you for other physical activity, you go train everything else hard, even your hamstrings if it's possible, even your glutes if it's possible, almost certainly your calves and definitely the entirety of your upper body. Six months later, what you could do is once your quad heals to where you can train it normally again, first of all, because of the way we're going to be doing this comeback process, your quad is almost certainly going to be as big as it ever was when you get to that point of trying to train it normal again. Because a lot of the training to get it normal actually grows it considerably. But the best thing there is when you get to that point six months later, the rest of your body is as jacked as it's ever been and more. Because kind of a cool thing when you're not training your quad, quads plural sometimes, you have lay off both of them, your maximum recovery volume for the rest of your body expands like crazy because quads are so systemically fatiguing. When you don't have to train quads or hands or glutes or whatever you hurt, the, all their muscles of the body can benefit by training more and recovering more. So a lot of times when I've been hurt in the past, which has been a fuckload, whatever I hurt, as soon as I hurt it, I'm like, fuck, 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 this is bad. And then the next thing I think, I'm like, ooh, I can grow the rest of my body really well. And I usually do, and it works out super well. So if you get really, really hurt, don't give up. It's just time to focus on something else. Consider it like a forced priority phase, a forced specialization phase. And if you consider it like that, it really isn't the worst thing in the world. It might not really be that bad of a thing at all. All right. So once you're cleared and you finished physical therapy, you can move on to phase two, which is high rep ROM training, range of motion training. You essentially do sets of 20 to 30 reps. But at first, in the, you know, they're like, three to five reps away from failure. Nothing crazy, get a little bit of a lactate burn going. The sets are sort of challenging, but you're not pushing it, pushing it. No way, never failure, nothing like that. That's for later. When you're doing these sets of 20 to 30, something, you know, the exercises can be uh, usually just isolation. Sometimes they can be compound, but, but braced. Like if you're doing squats, it might be you're holding on to something and doing squats. And when you're doing these, what you're doing is you're not focusing on using more weight every time or doing more reps every time or adding sets every time. You're focused on doing a bigger and bigger range of motion, not pushing it like crazy, but a little bit going a little bit more because a lot of times, probably most of the time, pretty severe injuries cause a big reduction in the range of motion to the joint, to the muscle, maybe some combination of both. So what ends up happening is like, usually you can squat this deep. Now you can just do this. So in your leg extensions, your leg presses, and maybe your assisted squats, every few training sessions, you go a little deeper, a little deeper and it hurts and you stop and you come back and then a little deeper and it hurts and you stop and you come back. And after a while, you're back to a full range of motion. So sets of 20 to 30, relatively pain-free, completely pain-free or just a little bit of a twinge to where you're like, ah, better back off. Okay, so so far that's our checklist. 
Don't go too close to failure, but do get a little bit of lactate burn in this phase. And you're going to do sessions for that muscle. If the rest of your training is normal and or super normal, because you have so much uh, bandwidth to train it with, between two and four sessions a week for the target muscle and or joint area. Uh, and with very little or no DOMS generated, you're not trying to fuck up the muscle because it's got enough problem healing on its own. No overlapping DOMS ever. Okay, so if you trained your quads for the first time or second time since finishing PT and they're sore, do not, do not, if your quad was hurt, train it again with any soreness whatsoever. Because in normal training, we know every now and again, that's okay. But in normal training, the integrity of your muscle is 100%. Now it's been downgraded to 97% because you're sore. If the integrity of your muscle is 57% and that's been downgraded to 45% when you're training sore again, you may just get hurt again. Do not do that. So easy, take it easy, very low volume at first, never any overlapping soreness. If you're really just not getting sore at all, you can add a little bit of volume, add a set here and there, take your time. And you're ready for phase three, the next phase, when you have gotten most or all of the range of motion back and that range of motion is pain-free or close. So I'll tell you this, if I'm like, hey, what phase are you at? And you're like, dude, I'm ready for phase three. And I'm like, all right, do a leg extension. And you do like this and you're like, ugh. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about phase three? You ain't ready for phase zero. Get out of here. Phase two still, okay? When with a light weight, something, you know, 40 or 50 rep max, you can do some reps with a pretty full range of motion, almost or full. And I say, hey, does that hurt? And you're like, a little bit of a twinge at the extreme, but it's not a big deal. Or you're like, dude, honestly, like there's no pain. It just feels a little weird. Or even if you're like, doesn't even feel weird, then you're ready for phase three. Until and unless you got to work with lighter weights to expand your range of motion. And this is really kind of a continuation of the philosophy of physical therapy. If you've ever had physical therapy, a huge part of what they do is uh, range of motion expansion, right? Usually it's like they increase your proprioception, get you moving to be aware of what's going on. Because a lot of times severe injury, you're like, I don't even know if my quad is active or not. I don't know where my knee is in space. Uh, after they get through some of that and you start really feel yourself out, then they work on range of motion because that's huge, huge, huge. All right. Phase three, phase three, you qualify for, as we just said, when you're relatively pain-free or completely pain-free and you're back to almost or a completely full range of motion training. There's a bit of nuance there. You got to be intelligent about which way you're going about. If you're there, your tissues are starting to get relatively healed. They are not 100% healed. So please do not go hard. Now, here's a huge mistake I've got to call out. Myself included and many other people, once they get to phase three, and they're pain-free in a full range of motion, they're like, fuck yeah, hard training, sets of five grinders, pop, goes the weasel, if the weasel is your quad, and then you're fucking in the shit again. Bad idea. You gotta take it easy, take it slow, but it's time to take it a little bit less easy and less slow so you can pump up the relative effort, the relative intensity. This means you just add a bit of resistance slowly. So, the goal here at the end of this phase is to be able to do sets of zero to one RIR, like real close to failure, in the 25 to 30 rep range, which if you've ever done, is pretty fucking hard and actually in the scientific literature, really robustly grows muscle. So once you get through phase three and you're at the end of phase three, you're actually growing muscle at almost 100% full tilt, just not through all the rep ranges and all the loading ranges. You wanna probably stick to mostly isolations in this case, just because they're easier to control, but braced compounds can work. What you don't want to do is just freewheel the shit and like dump squats, you know, uh, do, you know, super fast squats or something like that or things that require a lot of balance. Uh, here's a good example. If you hurt your quad, don't do walking lunges because just one little schmig this way or that way can cost you, right? Can you do some Smith machine squats? Maybe, maybe something like leg press or hack squats, a better idea and definitely plenty of leg extensions, just as an example. Slow eccentric on every rep. This is for two reasons. One, it makes the movement much safer because it slows down the speed, making less of a chance for high forces and less of a chance for error. Point number two, slow eccentrics have actually been shown to potentiate tissue healing better than skipping the eccentric or taking a fast eccentric. So it's actually almost physical therapy in and of itself. It's boring, it sucks, it's painful, it requires patience for sure, but it's a good idea to do because it works. All right? Slow eccentrics. Pause at the bottom of each rep and pause at the peak contraction at the top. So if you're doing leg extensions, that means you, you do this, kick your leg out, pause, squeeze, slow, 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 stretch, pause, 
and then up again, squeeze, pause, slow, 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 and pause again, and then go again. You guys like this ghetto leg extension with the finger here? That's how you got to do it. Again, does that blow? Of course it blows. But does it drive a shitload of metabolites into your quads? Oh my fuck. Generates a ton of metabolites. You will get a pump. You probably will get sore. It's good hypertrophy training at this point. It's just tedious and annoying. You'd much rather do sets of, you know, five to 15 reps like you normally do. Look, I'm 100% with you, but this is the way forward. This is the safe way, right? Again, two to four sessions a week here. Generating delayed onset muscle soreness, unlike in phase two, we don't want to even generate it. Here, we want to make sure that it's, it's totally fine to get DOMS, but no overlapping DOMS. So if you're still sore, wait, heal, and then maybe change the volume so you're not getting as sore again and overlap, right? Start with very low volumes, work up slowly. If you're not getting sore anymore, then add. If you're still getting sore, don't ever add volume and take your deloads when you're tired and then proceed. When are you ready for the next phase? When are you ready for phase four? When two things happen. One, you're pushing hard for high volumes, right? Multiple sets, like three to five sets per session, two to four times a week without pain or much or any weirdness. Like you're doing these leg extensions, you leg presses and people are like, why are you going so slow? Like, are you hurt? You're like, I, I was hurt. Um, and they're like, do you feel it? Nah, I'm like, not, not really. I guess not really. This is really good. That's a really, really good sign. And you're using higher and higher loads every week because you want to stay in that 25 to 30 rep range and you're getting stronger. So you're going to have to raise the load and you're very comfortable with them, right? Bad sign is if like you've been using 150 pounds on the leg press for these and you go to like slowly build up to 175 and your quad feels different at 175, like notably. And it kind of feels weird and a little bit uncomfortable and at the very bottom it hurts. Ooh, you're in phase three for a little while then. Milk it out slowly, keep it at 175, but repeat that load week to week to week, really focus on technique, and eventually the pain will start to go away and you'll start to be better. But you don't want a situation where you're like, yep, next week I start phase four, and then that like last week before the next, you're in the weirdness and pain from doing the regular weights of, of phase three. Not good, right? So notice you have to earn your progression through all these phases. Phase four is the increasing load phase. And this is when you're a whole lot better. You begin slowly adding load that takes you out of the 25 to 30 rep range. So maybe you start out one month with half of the weights at 25 or half of your sets at 25 to 30 reps and the other half of the sets at 20 to 25. Then the next month you keep the half at 20 to 25 and the next or the other half will be 15 to 20 uh, rep sets heavier. And then same thing, half 15 to 20, next half 10 to 15. If each one feels good, deload, switch up to lower reps, keep going. So you always have a mix of rep ranges, but the mix gets progressively heavier and heavier and heavier. Compounds are totally fine, but all still, huge important point with slow eccentrics and pauses only. None of this quick stuff, that's for later, okay? You are ready for phase five, or really kind of a return to normal training, only when the following things happen. You barely even remember what pain and weirdness in the area felt like. Like you're doing these sets and you try to think back like, man, I think my quads are like 100%. Or someone's like, man, what was it like to like a few weeks after it hurt your quad? You're like, oh, I gotta think back about it. Because remember, if your quad's still fucked up, people are like, hey, what's it like to hurt your quad? You're like, well, I'll tell you right now, it feels fucking weird. But if you're like, yeah, I guess it felt weird. Like think back to some of the older injuries you've had if you've ever been hurt. It takes you a little while to be like, well, what did it really feel like to move my pec when I hurt my pec? Like, oh yeah, it was kind of like some weird lines of pull and some pains and little pangs and stuff. But it's not something that's immediately apparent. Whereas if you just hurt your pec or it's still healing, someone's like, hey, what does it feel like to have a hurt pec? You're like, watch this. Feels like that. <laughs> I pull on a table here and all of a sudden it feels all off, right? So if, you, if you're really, really, really past it and you really don't even remember what it was like, that's a really good sign. And you're now getting to your best ever loads for slow eccentrics in these rep ranges. Like maybe you've squatted 300 for eight slow eccentric before, uh, and, or sorry, like 300 for, well, so we're in the 10 to 15 range, 300 for 12 slow eccentric before in the squat. That was your all time best. And this last workout, you're like doing 295 for 12 or 305. You're back at it, right? You're not the strongest you've ever been because you're still using slow eccentrics. So duh, your loads on the bar are lower, but for what you could do low, slow eccentrics with back in the day. And if you've never done them, you know, just kind of adjust. Like you're like, wow, if I can slow eccentric squat 300 for a set of 12. My best ever 
just regular squat is 315 for a set of 12. Like, man, if I sped these reps up, don't don't speed them up yet. But is it, think to yourself, if I sped them up, I'd be right there with it. So your, your strength is really coming close to normal. That's how you know you're ready for this more or less final transition, which is the transition to normal training. In the end of phase four, you should really be comfortable with sets of 10 to 15 reps, slow eccentrics and pauses. If there's still weirdness, you got to stay in phase four for longer and still milk it out. As soon as there's no weirdness, you're good to go. Next, you want to try a few sets of five to 10 reps, heavier, still slow eccentrics and pauses. Okay. But that exposes you to much higher loads. And if you're good to go, then you can try some sets next month or next few weeks with 15 to 30 reps. What the hell? We're going backwards, but without slow eccentrics and pauses, legit normal training sets of 15 to 30. If that feels good, what you want to do, counterintuitive, is take an active rest phase. Because remember, this entire time you just taken deloads, this is months later. Remember, this is severe injury. So this is like four to 12 months of training. You're going to need an active rest phase because you've been training pretty hard and your quads are back to more or less. They're, they're probably bigger than they've ever been at this point or quads or triceps, whatever you hurt. And they're sure as hell close to as strong as they've ever been. And you've been doing a fuckload of volume. I mean, Jesus Christ, two to four times a, a week training. This, this is a lot. You want, you're, you're at like essentially 98% healed. What you want to do is take an active rest phase. Two weeks or so of almost no training, just fucking around and being real safe. And then that last 2%, that's when that heals. Because you've got a lot of systemic fatigue. We could just like transition you right to normal training. But this is kind of like... Um, it's almost like tapering for a competition. You're almost the best you've ever been. Taper, compete, right? Same way as you're almost healed. Let's really finish the whole process by taking a ton of time off, really relaxing, right? Really relaxing. That's a really, really good idea. In the mesocycle, after your active rest phase, you start training normally in the 15 to 30 rep range, but you do slow eccentrics, and pauses in the five to 15 rep range if you train in that range at all. Some people like to just train in the higher range. So normal training in the 15 to 30 rep range and the five to 15 reps do slow eccentrics and pauses. If after a mesocycle of that, you feel 1000% and nothing bothers you, then you're cleared for normal training. Now, however, and this is the last uh, part of this video, err on the side of lower volumes, and a little bit away from failure, maybe one to two reps in reserve at the end instead of zero to one for the next few mesocycles, at least, at least the next meso, just to feel it out. And always warm up more than you used to to give yourself the lowest chance of injury. Once you have been hurt, you are more likely to be hurt again in that same spot. Unfortunately, it's just a reality of biology. So if you used to warm up for bench press, let's say you hurt your pec, you used to get in there, you do like a light set of 10, a heavy set of three, and then your working weight. Consider, you don't have to do this, but consider from now on until and unless you just really just, maybe, maybe forever, easy set of 10, then a set of seven, then a set of five or three to five, then your working weight or a little bit heavier for one or two reps to feel it out, and then your working weight. Now, that sounds like a pain in the ass. Some people need those long warm-ups. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Once you have been hurt before, severely hurt, not just like a little ding, you can forget about those. If you've been severely hurt before, and I've, I've done this before to myself a bunch, and I've seen other lifters I've coached or interacted with do this, rushing the warm-ups or even what used to be a normal warm-up can easily get you hurt again. It's not likely, but it's possible enough that it's just something you don't want to fuck with. Like once you've torn your pec before, you don't want any of that business ever again. And if it means, if you can reduce your future pec tear chances by 90% from what they are, just by taking one or two extra warm up sets, for the love of fucking God, take that shit, all right? And point number two, forever and always, try to be a little bit more of a stickler on technique. Back before you tore your quad, when you started grinding squats, you'd shoot your ass up a little bit, throw your head back, fucking just go, cut your rep just a little bit. I mean, you're still going below parallel, but you're like, fuck this, I'm getting more ups. And that's okay. It's just a part of being a young person and training super fucking hard. Once you've gotten severely hurt, which you hopefully never will, but if you do, it's time to be a real stickler. A lot of the videos you guys see of me training on my Instagram or on YouTube, you'll notice that I'm a real stickler for like painfully like annoying technique. That's because I basically torn every fucking part of my body at this point. 
thanks Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. JK, it's mostly uh, lifting and powerlifting and all that stuff. So for me, being a stickler means I get to come back tomorrow and train again. If I want to flare my elbows a bit more on bench, I talk myself out of it because I do it. I get one or two reps, tiny, tiny little bit of benefit. The chance I get hurt again is bigger than that and much worse. So once you've been severely hurt, take your time warming up and be a big stickler for real good technique. Technical failure is always the way you're supposed to fail anyway. Like when your technique breaks down, don't do it. But your bandwidth, your window of what you consider technical breakdown should narrow after you've been hurt, unless you want to get hurt again. And then if you do, fuck this whole rest of the presentation. As soon as they get out of the hospital, put your max squat on the bar, dunk that shit. You're the man. All the attractive women of your specific type will notice that you're a vortex of masculine energy. When you dump 600 pounds on yourself and your quad pops off the bone, they will come and they will, by filleting you, get you to the hospital to get you healed up again. Damn, that's some satanic shit. See you guys next time.